I'm Adam Grotman, the owner and founder of The Funny Business, thefunnybiz.biz, and we custom create the best comedic speeches and roasts, presentations, and finished video and PowerPoint presentations. And it's all about creating something hilariously funny and effective for your situation, your needs. Um, yeah, I got started in this business of mine, the funny business. Um, it all started through getting involved with stand-up comedy and after I moved to Los Angeles, I um, went and saw some stand-up comedy and I said, uh, I've always loved humor, I love being funny, just you know, with my friends and I can do this and I started doing it. You go to a show and you go to another show and then hundreds of shows later, you're, you know, that's it, you're hooked and you're, you're done. You're, you're a stand-up comic hooked for life, you know. Um, until you get uh, start a writing business like I did, right? Which I'm, I'm really glad I did. So anyway, through doing stand-up comedy and you're kind of out on the scene and you're meeting and hanging out with other stand-up comedians, comedians would, uh, well, I would like offer a joke say, hey, here's a joke that would work for you. And then people start asking you, can you write more jokes for me? And then at first you just sort of write and giving them jokes. And, uh, and it, it validates that creative feeling of like, yeah, I'm good at this. I'm a good joke writer. You know, besides writing jokes for myself that get laughs for other people. And then at a certain point, I sort of formalized it a little bit more. And I had a, a website, a simple kind of blog website about uh, me and whatever I was doing, my comedy, my act, whatever I'm doing, acting, whatever, and, and writing and stuff. And I put a little thing up there at the top of my website saying that I'm a comedy writer and can write, and I started getting some inquiries. And one of my first clients was um, in Scandinavia. He was actually a, uh, a Danish comedian that is really successful in that scene. They have a really good scene actually in Northern Europe, especially all around Europe, they have more of a stand-up comedy scene now. And he hired me, I ended up doing a lot of stuff for him, writing, helping write TV specials and all kinds of material. And then I started getting some, you know, of course, American clients, which I had already had some, but it started becoming a more formal business. I think humor for people, and people use it all the time in real life, I mean everywhere, people who never even think about you know, stand-up comedy or, or being a comedy writer. Um, humor is a way of taking tension in life and turning it around. It's almost like psychological judo, you know? And it's a really beautiful thing. It doesn't have to happen in a comedy club. It can be great in a comedy club, but it doesn't have to happen in a sitcom or a comedy club. It happens in real life. And some people naturally use it. It's also, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a lubricant to get through situations. Sometimes people who use comedy can, they can get away with stuff. You know, not in a bad way, but they can make life a little smoother. Because a joke, it sort of disarms you. It's something about humor, it's a magical little interaction where you sort of turn things around. It's generous too. Comedy is usually, it's not mean trying to hurt you. Usually it's making you laugh. You're okay and I'm okay, you know? So I think when it's used in a context of a speech or something, I think we're all can be wary of things that are serious or have to make us think too much. And there's a place for serious. And there's places where comedy is not appropriate. But, in most places, comedy is appropriate and effective. Well, people, whether it's corporate or whether it's what I call private, where it's an event in their life, but not in the business setting, um, they are self-motivated to get in touch with me, so they're almost always okay with talking, with speaking. They know they can speak what I write for them. And the occasion that they're nervous, I say, hey, remember, you called me, <laughs> and you'll be okay. Because you're speaking to me right now on the phone. And I can tell you can do it. It just, I'll give you some tips on the delivery. But usually people say, I'm okay at speaking. Um, I just need the funny words, the jokes. So what happens is I will find out the basics. When do you need it by? How long? How many minutes do you want to speak? What would you, how would you classify the crowd in terms of from the sort of conservative to the liberal side socially in terms of what the um, sensibility is, right? What the atmosphere is. I would say the range is from sort of like you have, you know, church clean, right? And then you have Comedy Central Roast, HBO, Dirty Show, right? And people like 
Well, different people like everything along that whole range. And I write what they want because it's appropriate for their group. And I can write anywhere in that range. So I kind of find out what that general crowd sensibility, you know, who gets offended the most or, or, or not. And then I will write them a little list, what I call sort of cues, um, prompts, it's called prompts, to give me information back. So it's all about their, their, uh, their friend Henry um, or their relative Henry, it's a big event, whatever. Um, or it's, 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 it's all about uh, Henry in the corporate setting, right? The guy we work with. Um, I write a bunch of questions. Tell me this about Henry. Tell me that. About, and I know the kind of questions to ask to get good information. Um, depending on the context, whether it's business or whether it's personal, I ask them questions about things that the person does and where they come from and their background and what's unique about them. And, and what do they what do they like to do, and what don't they like? To, what are they good at? What are they not good at? So anyway, I get a bunch of information back, but it only takes about 10, 15 minutes for the person to do it. It's not that difficult, and that gives me the ingredients to work with to make it personal, to make it not generic, because you can only really have a couple or a few sort of generic jokes in this kind of speeches that I do that will be applicable. It's personal and specific, and there's only one Henry. So there might be jokes that I could never use again because they only fit Henry, you know, who's seven foot two and he collects chihuahuas, you know, <laughs> and uh, wants to be an astronaut. You know, that's Henry. That joke, you know, works for Henry. So uh, it varies, but that's um, usually the process. And then I go back and forth with the people. I mean, it can be very communicative. This is one of, I'd say, you know, kind of more interesting clients I've had. He's a gentleman who's based here in Los Angeles. He's an actor. He's like a comedic actor, and he has created a really nice career as an impersonator of Barack Obama. Uh, he looks uh, uh, enough like Barack Obama, and he's a good enough actor that he makes a great Barack Obama kind of impersonator. So he um, has become very successful on YouTube, where he has like millions of hits on YouTube. He's one of the big YouTube success stories. And so he recently um, started um, being for hire through an agency to go do any event around the country as a, as a Barack Obama. So several months ago, there was an annual event called the TV and Radio Correspondence Dinner in Washington, D.C. And it's a really big event. And they actually cover it on, uh, I think, C-SPAN or one of those cable channels, news channels. And in attendance are all of the media that cover the Washington, D.C. scene, political scene, and some uh, political celebrities and famous politicians are there in this huge room. And so at one point, um, they brought up, uh, it's, like, it's like a joke, but the audience doesn't know, you know what's, what's going on. They say, well, there's a guy that uh, he wants to say a few words, and I don't, we barely have time for him, but please welcome the President of the United States, Barack Obama. So he gets up and he basically said jokes for a few minutes. And I wrote a bunch of the jokes and he did a bunch of the jokes that I wrote for him because um, he asked me to write some jokes for him for that event. And so it was uh, great for me to see in the actual C-SPAN coverage, he says a joke and you see Vice President Joe Biden laughing, who was there in the room and, and had actually already spoken up you know, on the, on the uh, Dea. So uh, him, Bill O'Reilly is there, you know, like mm, <laughs> the guy's telling jokes. Uh, Orrin Hatch and a lot of other famous uh, politicians and political figures, you know, and media figures were in the room. So that was really exciting. I have that actually on my website. I have um, a bit of that guy's speech. This is. Um, one of the clients, for instance, this is a good example of uh, the, the guy that they wanted the, the jokes about um, was a manager of a gas company in, in like the middle of the country. And um, so it was, it was um, kind of recognizing him, uh, I, th I think for his retirement. And, uh, or, or, yeah, there's some event, major event like that. And, um, Here's a few jokes about, about the guy. Um, Russell is a bit of a perfectionist. The other day he was organizing, alphabetizing, and collating. And that was just what's in his wastebasket. Uh, Russell enjoys music. He listened to rock and roll in high school. Of course, when Russell was in high school, rock and roll meant Beethoven. 
Let me see. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. I say no. Um, uh, in high school, he was the best dribbler on his team until he finally learned how to use the water fountain. In one game, he kicked the ball seven times. Unfortunately, he was the quarterback. Russell took one team all the way to the national championships. He wasn't playing, he was just the bus driver. Uh, Russell is a big preservationist, opposed to unnecessary cutting down of trees. That's why he doesn't read books. Um, two, inter two interesting things about Russell. First, he'll tell you that he always gives 110%. And second, he's terrible at percentages.